Being able to sense what we taste is an important ability that we have, which allows us to signal to our brain that we are consuming something good or something bad. Our ability to taste also initiates different processes down the line in digestion by signaling to our brain what kind of food we're consuming. There are five different tastes that we can sense. There's sweet, like from sugar and ice cream. There's salty, like from salt on a soft pretzel. Sour, like from a lemon. Bitter, like from dark chocolate. And then there's umami, like from a savory steak. So now, you must be wondering, how can we differentiate all five of these tastes from each other? Well, if you're thinking that your tongue is involved, then that's correct. If we zoom in on your tongue, then we see that there are tiny spots covering the surface. Those spots represent structures called papillae, and inside those papillae we have taste buds. Taste buds contain the taste receptors that can re react to dissolve parts of food and signal to the brain what exactly you're eating. That way, your brain can figure out if you're eating something good or bad. Still confused? Well, don't worry. We'll break down exactly what each receptor is looking for and what unique, what's unique about each taste. The basic idea for taste is that you have a simple receptor that interacts with the dissolved part of the food. Each receptor has different parts on its surface that can bind to the unique parts of each taste. Then after a food particle binds to a receptor, the goal is to push out these sacs neurotransmitter. Normally, this is done by an influx of calcium into the receptor. When this occurs, the sac of neurotransmitters will bind to the bottom of the receptor, fuse, and then release neurotransmitter. The release of these neurotransmitters helps send a signal via nerve fiber that tells the brain that a specific taste has been detected. Now, let's look at how we can transduce a signal from something that is sweet. A receptor for sweet things have a special G protein on its surface, which can bind with the sugar molecule. Once bound, the G protein signals to another surface protein, which activates a special type of control protein called a kinase, which will depict with a star. This kinase then closes the gate for a channel that was allowing potassium to leave the receptor. Since the potassium can't leave, this changes the condition inside the receptor, which leads to the opening of calcium channels. Now, with an influx of calcium, the neurotransmitter sacs can fuse and release their contents. This results in a signal that tells the brain that the food is sweet. Our next receptor is a salt receptor. This receptor is unique because it has an open channel that allows sodium to flow in. Salty food has lots of sodium, so when you eat something salty, more sodium can enter the receptor. The increased sodium leads to the opening of the calcium channel and influx of calcium. As you saw before, this influx of calcium causes the sac's neurotransmitter to fuse at the bottom of the receptor, causing it to release neurotransmitter and transmit a signal to the brain that you're eating something salty. Our next type of taste uh, to figure out is sour. Sour foods are acidic. When a food is acidic, it has something called protons. If a type of food is more acidic, that has a higher concentration of protons. So if you are eating a lemon or drinking lemon juice, then these protons will interact with your sour taste receptors. Under normal conditions, these receptors have potassium channels that allow potassium to leak out of the, out of the cell. However, after you taste something sour, protons can get stuck and block these channels. This prevents potassium from leaving the receptor. This changes the conditions inside the cell and causes the calcium channels to open. Then, as you've seen before, our inflow of calcium causes the neurotransmitter sacs to fuse and release neurotransmitter to warn the brain that you're eating something acidic or simply just sour. Our fourth type of taste is bitter. Bitter things can be found on dark chocolate. There are more than one type of receptor that can detect bitter, but one common one involves a special type of G protein receptor similar to of what we've seen in taste receptors. This G receptor is called transducin. Once the bitter food molecules bind to transducin, it sends a part of its complex to phospholipase, or PLC. The PLC acts like a machine and leads to the creation of a key called IP3. This key is then used to open the gate for a channel that is inside the receptor, which is full of calcium. After the gate is open, calcium fills the, res the rest of the cell. And once again, the influx of calcium pushes the neurotransmitter out of the cell. This sends a signal to the brain that we're eating something bitter. Our fifth and final taste is known as umami. This taste tells the brain that we're eating something savory and full of protein, something like a steak. What's unique about the, this protein 
is that it has something uh, unique to part of it called glutamate, which we will show as these red dots. So a very savory steak of lots of glutamate molecules, just like in bitter and sweet receptors, an umami receptor is a special type of G protein receptor. For this type of taste, it is believed that glutamate from the food binds to an ion channel, which is coupled with the G protein receptor called gustucin. After glutamate binds to our inotropic channel, the channel opens and activates gustucin, which sends a part of its complex to a neighboring protein machine. Like we saw in the sweet receptor, this protein machine activates a control protein that we're showing here with a star. Once activated, our star opens calcium channels. As you can guess, the calcium enters our receptor cell, and like we've seen before, the neurotransmitter begins to exit and sends a signal to the brain that you're consuming food that is rich in protein. So that's how our tongue can detect taste. We have lots of different taste receptors covering the surface of our tongue, so we can quickly turn those as all few molecules into chemical signals, which will notify our brain that we're eating something that is tasty or nasty. Each of the five tastes are unique, but it is necessary for our brain to be able to figure out which taste is which. Overall, these taste receptors provide important information that helps our brain make decisions and figure out what is going on, what we're eating, and what we're drinking.